The first issue when you date a single mom is that there are three people sleeping in one bed. You, your girlfriend, and her ex. I don't mean it literally, but rather hypothetically. Let me explain what I mean. Her ex is the father of her child and he has full right to come and see his kid. Every time he visits, he will communicate with your girl. Regardless of what happens, he will always be a part of her life and there is nothing you can do about it. I realized this problem during my short period of dating a single mom. I dated a single mom for two weeks. This is how it went down. The father would call her to arrange to come and see and visit his kid. And she would talk to him on the phone right in front of me, setting up appointment for his visit. We men are territorial. So this whole situation greatly affected my self-esteem. Just picture this situation. Another man with whom your girl was intimate at some point calls my girl and talks to her right in front of me. The absurdity of the situation is that you can't really do anything about it. You can't just tell him, hey, stop talking to my girl. All that's left to do is for you to accept the fact that your girl is talking to another man right in front of you. And on top of that, she talks to a man with whom she's been intimate with before. This is an ultimate fuck behavior. At some point, you will have to meet this man and he won't show you any respect. He'll probably look down on you and believe me, behind your back, he will be talking to his friends about you as you being an ultimate loser for raising his kids, for investing your money into his genes. And for what? Essentially, you making his job easier without any benefits for yourself. You will be the Omega loser in his eyes, in your girlfriend's eyes, even in the eyes of all your friends. Me personally, I clown around and laugh hysterically at those people, at some of my friends who are raising someone else's kids. I personally do not even call them men. They not deserve to be called men. They're complete losers and they are. I dated a single mom for two weeks and those two weeks of humiliation was enough for me to understand that there is no way it will ever work out with me. When I started dating her, I didn't know she was a single mom. It's not like I deliberately went after a single mom. She told me that she had a child one week after we started dating. When she told me that, I don't know what happened, but something internally, something was telling me that it's so wrong on so many levels. What's funny is I was in a circle of my friends who were aware of my situation. And it's not like I told them, it just they knew her. That's how they knew. And while we were sitting there, there were like about 12 of us, like maybe like five girls and seven guys. One of the girls, who is a friend of my ex-single mom, she told me in front of everyone, you know, George, it's so nice of you that you're so confident that you're willing to raise someone else's child, a child that is not yours. And the way she said it, the way she looked at me, the way everyone looked at me, and it's not like she meant to convey this energy, it's just like, I felt so humiliated. That was the moment that as soon as possible, I'm gonna break up with that single mom. Another issue within this category is the importance of your genetics. A few years ago, I visited my granddad who turned 90. I hadn't seen him since I was two years old. Upon meeting him, I was so shocked by the striking resemblance that we share, not just physically, but his mannerism, his gestures, his sensing structures, thought processes and reactions. To top it off, he wrote me a note and his calligraphy looked exactly like mine. I thought I wrote it. That was the moment when I realized how important the genes are. When you're dating a single mom, you don't know her ex. He might be a psychopath. He might be a sociopath. He might have some health issues. And trust me, those traits will manifest in his child later on. The way I manifested my traits from my granddad, who I've never seen, it's, it's all about the genes. Genes are awesome. Genes are important. So, so when you're dating a single mom, she usually has a young child. And this is not the most challenging period of child rearing. The real challenges lie ahead. When a child reaches 15 or 16 years of age, especially if it's a girl, those little shits will subject you to an immense disrespect. In order to raise a child properly, sometimes it will require you to scold them for their bad behavior so that they learn early on that there are always consequences for their bad behavior. However, when her child starts acting up, if you try to scold them, the older the child is gonna get, the more often you're gonna hear, who the hell are you to scold me? 
you're not my father and that child will be right you're not his father you have no right to scold that child and if you guys don't know it's impossible to raise a child without a strict discipline which sometimes requires physical um, scolding if you try to slap a child for his bad behavior that child will go ahead and complain to his biological father and then this father will have issues with you so therefore your job in this relationship will always be taking care of the hardest part of raising a child which is like providing financially for this child buying him presents buying him stuff buying him toys you like you'll be always buying trying to buy his love but that child will never love you the way that child loves his biological father so you constantly will be providing financially without having any benefits for yourself without extending your own genes and a minute ago I told you how important the genes are again essentially it makes you an ultimate fuck for raising someone else's child and if you think oh she has a nice child that child is gonna accept you if you think you're not gonna get disrespected here's another personal story my grandmother on my mom's side had a total of seven kids including my mom her husband which is my grandfather was blind and he passed away when my mom was only two years old even my mom doesn't remember him so my grandmother remarried and her new husband which my step granddad took the whole responsibility for raising those seven kids who in turn became our parents including my mom so my mom was raised technically by that stepfather i remember how me and my cousins so all me and all my cousins were his step grandkids right oh my god we disrespected that poor guy so much i was like the wild despite his relentless care for us as he showered us with love he he really treated us like his own kid he tirelessly tried to win us over yet we were persistently disrespecting him and taunting him all the time if you ask me now why was i doing this i don't know i remember like i was i think i was like six or ten years of age I would just like go at him like you shut up what are you standing here like I would start throwing stuff at him I don't know why I was doing this it's like something in kids lizard brain we like even our lizard brain understand that whoever raises us who is not our father is like something is so wrong on on biological level like in so many ways it's so wrong even the little kids understand this no one ever took his opinion or his feelings into consideration he just existed somewhere in the corner so children will disrespect you without reason let's take a hypothetical situation let's say you met a single mom who has raised her children with up upbringing even in such a case you will still encounter disrespect and animosity from her children ladies and single moms please pay attention to what i'm about to say in case you're watching one time i met a cute girl and after a couple of dates i brought her to my place and it was our first time while we were doing our things she was doing like this i swear that was my the most weirdest sexual experience i ever had man the lack of sound is like so unsettling and well i thought maybe she's just shy but this pattern persisted throughout second third and fourth encounter she just remained silent it was only after i inquired her about her family situation that's when i understood the silence of her lambs so when she was showing me her family photos i asked her your dad is not really your biological dad am i right she confirmed he wasn't and at that moment i understood what was her childhood trauma and she confirmed that yes indeed it was very traumatizing for her so ladies if you are a single mom and every time you bring all your friends by the name George, Chad and Tyrone to your place, right? Can you at least be quiet when you guys doing your thing when your child is in another room? Put yourself in a child's position. Imagine like you, some guy comes to your house and he's banging your mom while she's like screaming. <laughs> Come on, silly women, you're traumatizing your kids. How do single moms usually introduce the their boyfriends oh this is mama's friend this is mama's new friend and it's like all those men keep switching every time there is a new guy there is a new friend for your mom so the point is even if her kids have really good manners and respectful manners they will still hate you they will still disrespect you and it will drive those kids into a revenge mode on you and i might say i stand with those kids they have absolutely every right to disrespect humiliate you because you deserve it because you will you traumatizing those kids by dating single moms man this list is just keeps going like I, I can talk for like hours and hours like there is not a single positive outcome on dating single moms all right ladies 
it's for you this this part is for you your child is a problem not literally because most men don't really care whether you have a child or not but the, your child is a problem in terms of it's your behavioral adjustments that come with parenthood any single mom will have limitations or oh, i can't come at 11 p.m at your place because i have to bring my child to the kindergarten at 8 a.m in the morning oh i can't go on a date at 5 p.m because i have to go and pick up my child from a kindergarten oh i can't come to your place because i can't really leave my child with anyone so why don't you come to my place and we're back at square one where your f mama's friend come to the child's house and you guys doing your thing making noises traumatizing the kids again no matter at what angle you look at dating single moms there is no winning when my girl that i dated introduced me to her kid it was a kindergarten pre-season preparation season so one day they took me shopping to buy backpacks pencils cranians pens and whatever so i'm standing there and she's buying all her stuff and it was clear as day to me that it's just a matter of time before she starts asking me, can you buy this for my daughter? Can you buy that for my daughter? And I'm standing there looking at this situation, right? I'm 27 years old. I was jacked. I was making a ton of money. I was renting out a nice apartment from a designer with a fantastic view on the Moscow. And I had a lot of free time. And I'm like looking at this. I was like, why do I need that shit? I was not ready for the family. And even if you are a mature man who likes kids, who wants to have a family uh don't tell me that you're gonna enjoy indulging in these activities with a child that is not yours yeah i can kind of see when it's your child you and little george you guys go buying all kinds of stuff making jokes with my child i can start making uh, masculine jokes for instance all right little george who's gonna get faster to the store let's run you know Who's gonna get the cranians? Who's gonna get the cranians first? You know, I can see it can be fun, but doing it for another child is just awkward. No normal man would enjoy indulging in this type of activities with a child that is not yours. Because for some reason you feel like you're being used. Like I had no problems to buy like a couple dollars cranians and pencils, but it just like I didn't want to do so, like because of that feeling of being used. So ladies, the child is a problem. If you met a guy who is looking straight into your eyes and tells you the child is not a problem, whether he's lying to you or it's a man with no self-respect. And if he doesn't self-respect himself, you girls for sure are not gonna respect him either. And if a woman doesn't respect a man, there is no way this relationship is gonna work out. But most likely in 99.9% .9 situations, single mothers looking for a provider they're not looking for a man and i don't blame you guys we we can't really blame women for looking for a provider for her child any normal mother would think this way she's a mother her number one priority is to raise a child and it involves financial investment as a result even though ladies i don't blame you for having this way of thinking but we have to like on this channel we're being honest with women and with men i have to warn my guys that single mother will never love you unless it's some something wrong with her she will never submit to you you will never be able to emotionally break her thus meaning that you will never be a priority and a leader in that relationship which already makes this relationship not healthy to prove that when i broke up with my single mother girlfriend i told her hey like respectfully there's no way i can take responsibility for another child i just i'm just not the type of guy who can do that you know what she answered during our breakup conversation well i thought you were um, have a western mentality i thought you came from america i thought in america it's normal to take care of kids who are not yours so that's why i thought that it's gonna work out you see even though i'm the most handsome coolest charismatic guy in the world she still didn't love me she still were looking in her words she were looking for a provider i can't believe she thought of us americans as pushovers guys don't worry me being american i made sure that this russian chick will never think about americans as cuckold the game we true masculine american men are not pushovers by the way for those who don't know uh, when you get your american citizenship you have to go through a history test through english test and you have to sign the contract answering five questions promising that i will always be protecting 
American ideology that I will constantly fight against communism. I will constantly fight against Nazism. So, so I'm doing my due diligence to protect in America. Fuck yeah. All single mothers are problematic, not relationship material women. Here's my proof. Let's say she indeed uh, got married or got a kid with a person who was abusing her, who was being toxic, who was being drug addict, whatever, whatever, whatever. The reason why it's still women's fault, well, first of all, you can see a bad person, you can see a bad fit for a woman right away. It takes me about 30 seconds to figure out if a person is evil or not. He does, I don't even have to talk to him, I just feel his energy. Men have this ability to figure out a person within couple minutes of talking to another man even if this time frame is too extreme after uh, dealing with a man for a month or for two months you kind of can tell that the person is bad that the person is not cut for the relationship he can be abusive he can be too emotional and this is something that you can't really hide and even if an evil person tries to hide his negative traits like he won't be able to hide it for way too long like within a month or two months he's gonna give up you're gonna start noticing him, him being too emotional over small stuff by those little signs you can kind of tell and feel and women feel people much much better than men so she probably saw those negative signs in that man he's being drag addict alcoholic or whatever whatever and she still proceeded to start a family with him but basically it tells us that she's stupid and it, this is actually a very interesting point because this is actually the reason you know I always refer back to the days and this is actually explains why back in the days in all cultures there were arranged marriages and in some Muslim countries there is still tradition of arranged marriages because Understanding female nature, men understood that women have no ability to make the right choices. And if women are watching me, and on this channel I've said many times and showed you many proofs how women cannot choose what dress to wear, what to eat, where to go, this feature in their brain is missing. What up guys, welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel and welcome to Morning Coffee Thoughts where I give my thoughts over morning coffee. Um, I bought this shirt. This is a new shirt. Do we like it? I couldn't decide. I was trying to decide this morning. So the fact that there were arranged marriages when the father chooses a husband for his daughter was done not to undermine women that a lot of feminists think that oh arranged marriage, what if I'm not if I don't love that man? But rather out of respect to women. That way when there is an arranged marriage if something goes wrong, the father will come to that boyfriend and say, hey, like, what the hell are you doing? So basically, father handles responsibility to another man, to her husband. So now husband is responsible for that woman. And you can be damn sure that the father will choose the best choice for that woman. That's why back in the days, divorces and separations were very rare. My personal story, uh, it's about five months ago, I said that I actually have a girl that I'm planning to marry and it was actually an arranged marriage. But her father said a no-go for me. And the reason why, because uh, they found out that I like to play casinos. Here in America, going to play in the casinos, it's not a big deal. It's like going to the bar. But back in Georgia, in my country, she was actually Georgian. So in their family, they have some cousin or some relative who actually, in Georgia, casinos are legal, who went to the casino, who took, who took a lot of debts from mafia guys, went to the casino, lost all his money. Then that mafia guys beat the shit out of him. So they traumatized his spine. So now he's a handicapped. So the father of that girl thought that I'm a troublemaker or that I'm a casino player. So now I don't have that girl that I was planning to marry. But it's just an example for you to see how peculiar men are in the, in the arranged marriages when they're choosing a proper partner for his daughter. So now, since women making all those choices, women are responsible for choosing bad husband if you date a single mom like think about it she probably constantly talks crap about her ex oh he's this he's that he's this he's that you can actually put her in her place by asking her a simple question well if you saw that he is like that 
why did you go ahead and proceed to marry him and please don't tell me that oh he was normal before we married no you cannot fake fake personality for too long within a month women should be able to see little signs that this guy is not magic material so it's her fault that she married an abusive husband which makes her a problematic woman she she is whether stupid or whether she is weak for emotion she saw his hairy chest and she immediately thought that he will be a great man it's basically like men oh she has big boobs then i'm gonna marry her it's the same logic and it's a silly logic for instance in my situation i asked her why did you guys broke up and she told me oh he was a drug addict so I found out that they were dating for three years. Her husband was doing drugs with her brother. So he hooked up her younger brother, who at the time was 14 years old. He hooked him up a young guy to drugs. She still dated him for three years and she still went ahead and married him. And she still went ahead and got a kid with him. So whose fault it is? His or her? It's her fault 100%. Problematic woman. In most situations, however, probably women leave husbands because they were too nice because they were too kind to her they were they were your typical nice guy like in the video i made about casey nace that he couldn't he couldn't satisfy her emotional needs when you have to emotionally break a woman in that situation it's still a problem if she is the reason why she divorced and most of the time women divorce men remember i made a video about red flags in a woman and i said if a woman did something if women broke certain internal barriers she will be breaking those barriers throughout her life so if a woman at least once tried any drugs she already took that risk one time taking a dangerous risk for a instant moment of pleasure or if a woman ever skydived or did any extreme sport activities it's not natural for a woman to take risks over a few minutes of euphoria so if she once broke a family she's already experienced woman it's not going to be too hard for her to do for the second time because she has done it before which makes her a problematic woman again not relationship or not marriage material woman again like no matter how you look at this situation it's still woman's fault now be aware of this potentially dangerous situation if a single mom promises you to have a child with you and you naively decide to have a child together in this situation you and the life of your child are done imagine hearing this from your partner and this situation will happen 100 percent or you love your child more than mine boom suddenly you have a conflict i'm telling you this relationship is like sitting on a powder keg that can explode at any moment right and if my child wants an expensive toy and i can't afford it um and the other child wants to have expensive toy toy too i mean for my child i would go above and beyond work overtime but to get the toy for my child but now i have to do the same i have to do double work for the child that that is not mine just to make sure that i won't get called out by my partner saying that oh you love your child more than mine at some point it will happen at some point you will always treat your child better than the child that is not yours day, my baby day. you are stepping in into a existing broken family instead of properly taking the woman in your family and creating a new family unit where you going to be a leader the captain of the ship even though i'm electrician by day and pimp by night but clearly understand that there is no way i can take over a leadership position in that relationship and if i realize that even i couldn't do it me being a masculine sensei of youtube there is no way uh, you will be able to do it this is what happened when i realized it one time she invited me over and we were sitting in the kitchen while she was feeding the baby suddenly her phone rang and it was her mom dude are you five yeah five inches deep in your mom they started discussing plans about kindergarten and potentially moving to a different apartment place to closer to a better kindergarten that was available in that area and the way they were talking it was clear as day that Whatever they're discussing, it's not negotiable. If it had been my child, I would probably have the right of opinion. I could have said yes, no, maybe it's not the right time and so on. However, on an energy level, I realized that I'm just a guy without any right of opinion and rightfully so because this is not my child, this is not my family. And it's not because I was doing something wrong, it's just how it is. I was sitting in the corner just like my mom's stepdad the story about whom i told you in the beginning of the video a guy just exists somewhere in the corner 
It, it was probably the most devastating and humiliating feeling I've ever experienced. In a single mother family, this is how hierarchy is structured. First her needs, then needs of her child, then needs of her cat, dog, turtles, her parents, and maybe, maybe somewhere at the end, your needs. So you will never be a leader in that relationship. In order to have this relationship, you have to become a doormat. And if you don't become a doormat, this relationship won't exist. Now, regardless of that, it doesn't mean that you can just give up or become a doormat. You still have to fight because if you don't, due to female nature constantly testing you, she will start walking all over you. So your relationship becomes an ongoing battle similar, similar to one's uh, when you date a career woman, I actually made a video about career woman. What type of relationship is that? It's like a constant ongoing fight for a chance to have a leadership position. But this fight will continue. Like the, those career women, they won't leave it alone. Like good women, okay, you will want her in the conflict. She's going to submit to you. Career women will never submit to you. The same with single moms. They will never submit to you because she has a child. She has a priority. And again, in single mother case, it's absolutely normal because any single mom would put priority her child over some man and, and rightfully so. During the two weeks I dated her, I had to constantly assert myself with everyone, including the fact that I had to knock out her younger brother. So she invited me to go camping because her friends invited her and her younger brother knew their friends and he went there as well suddenly at the camping site it started to rain so we all hid in each tent like we all like there were like three four couples we all had our tent so me and her we went to our tent well she jumped up on me she raped me basically because i genuinely felt bad i'm in a new company there is like her younger brother and i'm gonna like bang her in front of everyone like in the tent because it's going to be visible but anyway she just grabbed me and sat on me. I couldn't do anything about it, I guess. And she started making noises and then rain passed really quickly. So everyone heard us. Everyone started laughing and making jokes. But anyway, we finished our stuff. And I guess her younger brother couldn't take it. I kind of feel bad for him because I have empathy for him. I understand why. And again, like if, if it was my sister, I would react the same way. Or like if some new dude who she just introduced back here right there in front of me that's kind of uh, disrespectful but but if it was my sister's like official husband like i wouldn't say a word it's not a problem so he went at me uh trying to wrestle me or something he thought i couldn't fight or something so i knocked him out cold he fell unconscious we had to like put him together but even though he started first even though it was beautiful knockout oh my god like I don't know, something about knocking out other people is like makes you so powerful and masculine, I don't know why. I've knocked out a few people in my life. Um, well, when I was going to boxing classes, I was specifically learning how to knock people out. I dedicated three months of my life learning the biology of humor to, to learn how to knock out people with one punch. But anyway, he got what he deserved. He started first. And even though everyone still thought that I'm a bad guy, even though I did everything right. You see, you constantly fight for your leadership position and at the end of the day, you're still a bad guy. Now, you want to hear something really funny. Uh, her parents, her friends, her brothers, her sisters will be of disapproval of you 100% all the time. Now, hear me out. Your own family, your own friends, your own brothers and sisters will also disapprove your choice of dating a single mother. Like, you are against everyone. Why don't you go ahead and ask your own mother what's her perspective if you're gonna bring or if you're gonna marry a single mom. She's gonna say, what are you, crazy? Now, ironically, I'm reading a book called This Boy's Life and uh, I'm at the page 100 and there is a situation, well, there is basically a boy and his mother, single mom, who are running away from Sarasota, Florida, from her crazy ex who were beating her up all the time. That's exactly what I said in this video. Like, always have this crazy ex that you're gonna have to deal with at some point. But she basically ran into the situation where uh, she met a guy and this guy forcing that child to love him, to respect him, to be afraid of him. He's basically terrorizing that child. And I would like to read what I just read. Check it out. Page 105, it's like a memoir of a little child. I had come to feel that all of this was fated, that I was bound to accept as my home a place I didn't feel at home in. It's He's talking about the situation because they're moving to that guy's house, her mama's new friend. 
and to take as my father a man who was offended by my existence and would never stop questioning my right to it. Like you see, even little kids understand, like even if you force that child to love you or to be afraid of you, that child still will never accept you. Now another problem is that you can find yourself investing all those money, paying for college tuition, raising that child, right? And this child will grow and at the end of the day, let's say if you have a daughter, any most memorable events will still be credited to her biological father like for example i've read a lot of stories where like stepfathers invest a bunch of money in that child and then they would get frustrated and mad when during the wedding of their stepdaughter the biological father gets an honor to lead the daughter to her new husband what a humiliation now i can continue talking about reasons that are like thousands more reasons it's just like some reasons from top of my head but I'll just tell you one thing, I'll just give you one recommendation. Listen, if you watch other red pill YouTubers, those people who are not as smart as I am, who actually they had to, to learn all this, they had to go ahead and marry and have a kid with a single mom and now they created those YouTube channels and talk about, oh, don't date single moms, when it's like, to me, it was clear as day, like that there is no way this relationship is gonna work out. And remind you, back in the days, there were no videos on single moms but but all the reasons that i mentioned here like more or less you can probably find uh other youtubers talking about it but here's the problem that i have with all those coaches they all recommend you all uh with single moms you do hit and run i'm here to ask you not to do so those poor women go through a lot of struggles and actually like reading this book um uh, this boy's mom she got uh, art. She has all those crazy men who lie to her uh, all the time that, oh, she's going to take care of a child. And actually, like, if you're going to start dating single mom, you're going to have to lie. You're going to create a bad karma around you. And plus, all right, you're going to do hit and run. And then uh, you're going to dump her. And she's going to have hate towards all the men out there. And she will be hating men. And at some point, she's going to go revenge on another guy after you the reason why those red pill coaches got burned by single moms because uh they saw all those signs in the first couple days of dating single moms but but internally they're doormats that's why they all like strive to be all alpha guys you know what i mean but they got burned because they were doormats because they were going through all this disrespect right from the get-go that's why they got burned so it's not really a single mom's fault it's their fault 100 percent and now they have this anger towards those women and they recommend you to do hit and run please don't do it why now the real reason why you date single moms is because you don't have any other options so that's the real reason so the real reason is that you can't really attract women in your life that's what's going on so it's all your fault but um, i'm here to tell you i can expand this topic and actually, when I was breaking up with my single mom, I just called her. I was like, hey, like, I can't take responsibility of her child. And I'm so silly, right? I She was driving a car and she almost panicked. She almost crushed the car. So I should have asked whether she's at home or not. She started crying. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, walking around hurting those women, poor women who, who have a very hard life with a single child, even though it's their fault. But still, just because there is a lot of evil just because you got betrayed or something did something bad to you it doesn't mean that you have to lose all your trust in other people it doesn't mean that you have to become evil as well it doesn't mean that you can do those bad things to those women even if you got burned by a single mom it doesn't mean that you have to go and do revenge on those single moms you know as a good masculine honest man uh you should have your principles be respectful be upfront and not lie to single moms like me personally when i'm on tinder every time i see single mom i swipe left that's it not interested i'm sorry 